All right, so Piers Morgan went on uh, Megyn Kelly's podcast. She's been trying to break into the podcast game and, you know, become like an independent new media star as opposed to being the traditional mainstream media star that she was previously. Um, it, it, by the way, it's, I've seen a bunch of her shows. It's so forced. It's so forced. She doesn't, she's more of that old school media type personality, the serious professionalism and whatnot and how she talks, how she presents herself. It just doesn't work with the, in the new media game because it's not, she's not that type of, she's not the type of person to randomly drop F-bombs, you know? She's not the type of person to talk like she's at a bar stool with somebody. And usually that's, that's the shit that takes off in new media, right? So it's super fish out of water. Piers Morgan is trying his new show on whatever Rupert Murdoch's new streaming service is. It's insufferable. We covered his launch thing the other day, and it was just, oh, my God. Uh, he made me he made me feel embarrassed at the fact that I'm generally viewed as an anti-woke leftist. Like, I'm against wokeness, against cancel culture, whatever that means. I, mean, I want to take the time to get into the definitions, but um, he... He did such a, like, a screeching, you know, grandstanding, arrogant monologue on that that I was like, Jesus Christ, this makes me want to be pro-cancel culture and pro-woke. Anyway, um, so look at what, you can see it in the title here, but look at what they end up saying about protests, peaceful protests outside of uh, Kavanaugh's home and some of the other Supreme Court justices' home over Roe v. Wade people protesting at the homes of our Supreme Court justices. First of all, these are dumbass protesters, Pierce, because according to the reports, Chief Justice Roberts isn't even in the majority in this draft opinion. He might actually already be siding with the liberals. We're not sure. Yeah, so that's half true because Alito's take is, and we talked about this the other day on the show, Alito's take was, I'm not pro Roe versus Wade. I'm not even pro Casey, which was the follow-up case in 1992. But I'm not against Roe versus Wade. I don't want to totally scrap the framework of Roe versus Wade. So what he wanted to do was further amend it. So the standard that was set up for Roe v. Wade is that there are trimesters for the pregnancy. First trimester, second trimester, third trimester. The ruling in Roe was in the first trimester, it's totally the right of the woman. The government can't intervene at all. They want to get an abortion, they get an abortion. In the second trimester, they're allowed to do some health regulations around abortion. In the third trimester, if the states so choose, they can ban abortion for the third trimester, so they can ban, like, late-term abortion. That was Roe. Casey came up after that. In Casey, they changed that standard a little bit. They moved away from the trimester standard, and they changed it to viability of the fetus. Now, what he wanted to do is basically keep that viability standard, but just push back the number of weeks. So if previously it was, like, 20 weeks or 22 weeks and later, that's when you can regulate and or ban... He wanted to change that to like 15 weeks or like 13 weeks or something like that. So keep the framework of Roe. It's still a right, but it's a right up to like 12 or 13 or 15 weeks or whatever it was. So he wanted to, you know, death by a thousand cuts to Roe versus Wade as opposed to this blunt force instrument where you just pummel it and break it down and then lead to the giant backlash. See, he cares more about the integrity of the court than the other conservative justices do. He wants the court to be viable in the long term. So he need, he wants to whatever changes they make they want it they want it to be more nuanced and moderate and more palatable, and the other justices are hardcore ideologues and they're like founders never said anything about abortion so just get rid of Roe versus Wade. So they're right that protesting outside of Robert's house is not he's not as big of an offender as Amy Coney Barrett as Gorsuch as Kavanaugh. So yes, I me personally if I was in charge I would have targeted the protests more towards Kavanaugh Amy Coney Barrett Clarence Thomas Gorsuch. Um, they didn't do that, so they're a little off, but still, he does want to chip away at Roe, so he's still, he's less of an offender, but he's still an offender in terms of taking away rights. Anyway, let's continue. Sure where he is. So they're just dopes, right? So they just go to the Chief Justice's home for actually no reason. Justice Kavanaugh seems to be part of the majority, so they go to his house. He's got two young daughters. No one cares. Let's go ahead and scare him. Wait, 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 wait. It was a peaceful protest. At no point did it turn violent. A lot of these people had fucking placards. You had neighbors who were part of the protest. Why are you bringing up the daughters? Why are you bringing up the daughters? Now, look, maybe they had a moment of like, geez, I don't know what's going on here. This is kind of crazy. But it became readily apparent very quickly. Okay, these, this, isn't, this isn't dangerous. Nobody's doing anything violent. They're being peaceful. So the, we're, Megan, we're getting pretty damn close to feelings over facts here. We're getting pretty damn close to triggered lib snowflake type stuff that you guys like to go after when it's the other side 
being overly sensitive. But now when it's you guys, you're an advocate for the oversensitivity. There are other protests planned, including we're told at Amy Coney Barrett's house. She's got young children, including a 10 year old who happens to have Down syndrome. Great. What does that have to do with anything? Nobody's a threat to anybody at all. And the whole purpose is peacefully protest to say, we don't agree with your decision. You probably shouldn't do this decision. By the way, you're trying to take away what is now viewed as a constitutional right. So you don't want protests at your house. Maybe don't take away constitutional rights. Just a thought. If you didn't take it away, the protest wouldn't be happening. So whose fault is it really? And again, reiterate, super peaceful. Great idea to go to that house and scare the child. No problem. Um, so to me, it's disgusting. And it's, uh, it's actually deeply problematic because uh, I think it's an open attempt to, 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 to intimidate a court that's currently adjudicating a really important matter. It, a matter. It's obvious intimidation or at least attempted intimidation. That's how she's talking about the will of the American people. Some polls have up to 70% of the country says don't overturn Roe versus Wade. The low number is like 58%. Strong majority of the country. When they express disagreement, a political disagreement over a political issue. Now, they might pretend it's not a political issue. It's a constitutional issue. Well, the Constitution is political. And it's the different interpretations of the Constitution. When they're expressing, hey, look, we disagree over this. Ooh, that's not allowed. We don't allow disagreement here. <laughs> what happened? I thought you guys were oh, the marketplace of ideas and the free exchange of ideas. This is all that matters. Free speech is the most important thing. Free expression is the most important thing. The First Amendment is the most important thing. Then when people actually exercise their First Amendment rights on an issue where you disagree with them. Oh, my God, this is dangerous. This is scary. This is an intimidation tactic. <laughs> complete frauds, complete hypocrites. Piers Morgan's whole first monologue was all about free. I'm in favor of free speech. I don't care about your feelings. I care about the facts. And now you're about to hear what he says. His take is the exact opposite now. All I care about is feelings. I don't care about the facts at all. You can make a very strong case that it's actually criminal for that reason. <gasps> it's not just a normal protest. And our no, White House here. It is definitely not criminal. It is definitely not criminal. And I'm going to get into the legality of it in a second. So hold your horses on that because I'll prove it to you continues to shrug it off like, oh, protest is a good thing. This is really just a run-of-the-mill protest. What do you make of it? Based. It's not a run-of-the-mill protest yes, when you basically terrorize <laughs> the senior judges of the country at their... Terrorize by expressing disagreement in a peaceful protest. Terrorize. Oh, my God. You need your fainting couch, bro. Let me give you some pearls so you can clutch them. And go ahead and do your best pose as you faint on your fainting couch. Oh, I cannot take mild disagreement. Oh. Homes when they have young kids. That's a form of domestic terrorism that's going on. <laughs> and you saw it in Wisconsin, I think, when an anti-abortion building... Domestic terrorism! And then what he did after that is so dishonest. Did you hear that? He was targeted overnight with a yep. firebomb. Did you hear that? Hold uh, on. When they have young kids. That's a form of domestic terrorism that's going on. Right now. And you saw it in Wisconsin, I think, when an anti-abortion building was targeted overnight with a yep. firebomb. Uh, that is so dishonest and so disingenuous. He just conflated actual terrorism, violence for a political reason, the pipe bombing or whatever, the, the vandalizing of one of those pro-life clinics. He just conflated that with peaceful protesters petitioning their government. That's disgusting. That's like saying there's no difference between an anti-Iraq war protest and an individual who blows up a military recruitment center because they're against the Iraq war. That's the same thing. It's domestic terrorism for both of them. Peacefully protesting to have your voice heard in what's supposed to be a constitutional republic and representative democracy. That's the same thing as literally doing violence or property violence and damage. That is not the same. It's not even close. It's not even close to the same thing. That is leagues apart. And he knows that. He knows that. He knows that. He's being disingenuous and dishonest on purpose to make a hacky political point. And again, I can't stress this enough. This is Mr. His first episode. I'm all about free speech. I'm all about free speech. Where's your concern for free speech now? Where's your concern for free expression and freedom to protest in the First Amendment now? It's non-existent because you're both political hacks. I've never seen worse hacks in my entire life. This is the hackiest shit I've ever seen. Domestic terrorism to protest, to protest. Unbelievable. Completely outrageous behavior. This is domestic terrorism you're witnessing. He said it twice. 
okay, no, I'm going to, I'm going to lose it. So, all right, let's talk about the legality of it. Madsen versus Women's Health Center, Inc. Madsen versus Women's Health Center, Inc. is a United States Supreme Court case where petitioners challenged the constitutionality of an injunction entered by a Florida state court which prohibits anti-abortion protesters from demonstrating in certain places and in various ways outside of a health clinic that performs abortions. The petitioners, Madsen and other... Op- uh, other abortion protesters regularly protested the respondents, the Women's Health Center, and the abortion clinic's respondent, hold on, Women's Health Center and the abortion clinic's respondent in Melbourne, Florida, as well as in front of the homes of clinic employees. So, let me explain to you this case. This case happened in the 1990s, 1994 it happened. You have anti-abortion protesters who would show up to this abortion clinic and... They would protest. And there were complaints that, hey, not only are they protesting, they're like blocking entrance in and maybe physically assaulting or touching some of the women who are trying to get in there. And they're loud, they're aggressive, and they're not even giving people a reasonable amount of personal space when they try to get in. They're just trying to shut it down through protest. So it it bounces back and forth the Florida state courts and then eventually it gets all the way up to the Supreme Court but by the way not only were the protests in front of the abortion clinic random employees of the abortion clinic these protesters would go in front of their ha- would go to their house and protest at their house now basically there were some rules and regulations which were implemented and then rolled back and they kept bouncing around with like what the rules are going to be around this. The state court would decide one thing, then the federal court would overturn it or limit it. And so at one point it was like, you need 300 feet between you and the clinic. Uh, And you can protest, but you have to be 300 feet away. Well, they said, well, that's a little too harsh. Maybe not 300 feet, maybe 36 feet. And then there was also like, well, you, you definitely can't physically touch anybody and you have to abide by whatever the noise ordinances are. They were making too much noise late sometimes. So they had like, Noise rules from this time to this time. You can't be overly loud this time to this time. But at the end of the day, the decision from the Supreme Court was, with mild regulations around the edges, these people absolutely have the right to protest in front of the abortion clinic, and they absolutely have the right to protest in front of the homes of the abortion clinic employees. Now again, mild rules are in place. You need X amount of feet. It wasn't the 300. 300 was onerous, and it was viewed as anti-First Amendment. Certain number of feet between you and the abortion clinic. Certain number of feet between you and the home of the abortion clinic employee. You have to abide by the noise ordinances, etc. But the general ruling of the court in 1994 was, you have a constitutional First Amendment right to protest, not just in front of the abortion clinic, to protest in front of the homes of the abortion clinic employees. And these are just rando abortion clinic employees. They're not nearly as powerful as Supreme Court justices. But you have a First Amendment right to do that protest as long as you're being peaceful and as long as you abide by the whatever the noise ordinances are and the rules and regulations around spacing. So you can't physically touch anybody. Obviously, you can't hurt anybody. You have to maintain certain amount of space. But totally legal. Totally constitutional. This is adjudicated. These charlatans, these frauds are acting like this is dangerous. This is an implied threat. This is domestic terrorism, all because they disagree with the politics of the pro-life protesters. Think about how dishonest that is for people who like to cloak themselves in anti-cancel culture, anti-wokeness, pro-free speech, pro-First Amendment stuff all the time. Understand something, guys. These people are frauds. They're frauds. And unlike them, I'm consistent. I think the Supreme Court got this case right. I think you do have a constitutional right to protest in front of an abortion clinic if you don't like abortion. I think you do have a right to go to the to the employees' houses, again, as long as there's the reasonable spacing, totally understandable, and as long as you abide by whatever the noise ordinances are, etc. But you do have a right to show up. If you're on like a public sidewalk just in front of the person's house and you are protesting peacefully, you have a right to do that. You have a constitutional right to do that. These guys are hacks. They have no standards. They have no criteria. They have no objectivity. And they like to think they're the epitome of all those things. Don't buy the bullshit. They're full of shit. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.